we now go, go with the next topic which is called as the dc transfer characteristics so the dc transfer characteristics relate the output of the output to the input voltage uh, we will look into this conditions looking into the table which is in the next slide which uh, describes about how the various regions of operations are there in n and p type because a CMOS inverter comprises of NMOS and PMOS device as shown in this diagram. This is your NMOS and this is your PMOS. And similarly, uh, you should also be aware by this time what is the importance of VTN and VTP. These are the threshold voltages for N type and P type. And uh, as already discussed, VTN is positive, VTP is negative. So as the source of the NMOS transistor is grounded, this is grounded, source is grounded, VGSN is equal to input. It's completely dependent only on the input because one source is grounded, therefore it is gate and yes, which in turn is nothing but the input voltage which we are giving. Similarly, when you consider this is your drain and this is your source. So source is connected to the supply and your input that means the gate and the source maximum that is your VDD. Therefore, uh, VG, if VGSN is equal to input, what would be your VDSN because from drain we are taking the output with respect to NMOS VDSN is equal to V out. So I hope this is clear. Similarly, when we consider the PMOS transistor, it is tied to VDD maximum so what is vgsp vg this is yes g this is your yes so what would be vgs what would be your vgs it should be equal to input minus your vdd that will be your input minus in our uh, vdd would be your vgs similarly what would be your vdsp it is because there is no low potential here everything is going from high to low so drain and source would be equal to v out minus vdd so the difference between the drain and the source is this so that is the initial representation to be understood and that is what we are discussing so as i had already told you this is the table now you understand nmos and pmos are understood in different contexts and the three different regions are cut off linear and saturated so when the device nmos is said to be in off state when your gate voltage is less than threshold voltage similarly when do you say the pmos should be greater than similarly when do you say the pmos device is in off state since your vtp is negative the gate voltage should be greater than vtp so these are the two conflict three or complementary statements with respect to NMOS and PMOS. So if the device has to go into on condition, it has to be greater than VTN. It should be lesser than VTP. Similarly, in linear region, if your gate voltage is greater than TN, yes, condition is right, right? This is in off condition. If you want to make the device on, to on condition, two conditions are there in on. One is linear and saturation. So the gate voltage should be greater than the threshold voltage in these two conditions. Similarly, the input also should, should be greater than the threshold voltage. And VDSN, that is your drain voltage in SMOS, is nothing but VGSN minus VTN. And your VDSN in saturated condition is also VDSN minus VT. And your output is V in minus VT and which is less than here it should be greater than. In the same way we need to understand with PMOS also. So the this is how we are understanding. Uh, the objective is to find the variation in output voltage. This is the output and this is the input. One condition has been assumed here. Uh, already we have had a discussion that IDSN is nothing but the drain current flowing in the NMOS. IDSP is nothing but the drain current flowing in PMOS. Because of their uh, working principles, both the devices are complementary. So if one current is positive, the other current is negative. 
therefore idsn is equal to minus idsp but since the mod value has been considered here that negative can be neglected and as a result in one condition we just give a statement that idsn is equal to modulus of idsp therefore considering this the transistors characteristics are plotted here in terms of vdsn vdsp idsn idsp with various vgs values so if you understand this becomes your input this becomes your output so what is your input it is your vdsn and similarly what becomes your output here the drain current controlling voltage becomes your gate voltage so different gate voltage you get the characteristics and this is your n mos characteristics Similarly, this is your PMOS characteristics. Now, when the two characteristics are folded and superimposed by the action, so when you fold this, the characteristics will come like this, and when you superimpose, this is what you get. So, figure B shows the same plot of IDSN and IEDSP in terms of V out for various values of V in. So, by superimposing and folding, this is what we are getting. Therefore, the possible operating points of the inverter marked with dots are the values of V out where IDSN is equal to IDSP for a given value of VDN. So, we will see that in the next slide. Now, what happens? You have to take the intersecting regions or the intersecting point 1, 2, like this. This is your VGS1. This will be VGS1 with respective to PMOS and NMOS. So, the intersecting points are considered as shown in the next slide. Once you take the intersecting points, you get a curve like this. So, these operating points are plotted and they form the DC transfer characteristics. So, the supply current IDD is equal to IDSL which in turn is nothing but IDSP. Now, this is the current. This is the current where here this this is your VTN. Till here, your NMOS device is off. It starts conducting. And what is the condition? Your V in should be, what is this point? If you check, it is VDD minus VTP. So, only till this region, from here to here, your device is on. And therefore, you get a current curve. So, you can see a current curve is just an inverted V. At one particular point, it is very steep or it is pointed. So, that is at point C. That means both the devices are momentarily on. So, this is the DC transfer characteristics. So, the operation of the CMOS should be understood by considering five different regions. So, let us consider the first region, region A. What is the condition? What is your input? Your input, this whole thing is your input, right? Your input lies in what region to what region? Your input lies from 0 to VTN. Therefore, input V in is less than VTP and greater than 0. V in is less than VTN and greater than 0. This is the region A. Similarly, this is your region B. This, how should I give the relationship? V in is less than VDD by 2 and greater than VTN. That is what has been given here. This is your not completely region C. It is a point. So, what is your V in? V in is equal to VDD by 2. Similarly, what is your region E? From here to here. So, your input is at this point which is VDD minus VTP. Your input is less than VDD minus VTP and greater than VDD by 2. Similarly, your VDD and VDD minus VTP is your region E. So, input is less than VDD greater than VTP minus VTP. V in is greater than VDD minus VTP. So, this is the regions identified for or the area for different regions A, B, C, D, E. Now, what happens? <clears throat> what is the status of PMOS and NMOS? When I say your input is less than VTN. What is the status of NMOS device? Yes, please understand. You have to understand the region A in terms of two different devices. <coughs> one is N and the other one is P. 
So what happens when input is less than VTN? Your N MOS is off. Look here. Your N MOS is off. What is the condition for your P MOS to be off? The input should be greater than VDD minus VTP. But our input for PMOS is less than VDD minus VTP. Therefore, PMOS device is on. On and what region it is in? Linear or saturation? It is in linear region. Similarly, in region B, now V in has great been greater than VTN. Therefore, similarly, NMOS has gone to on state and PMOS since it is less than this PMOS is also on. So NMOS is also on and PMOS is also on and the two different regions depending on the voltages it has been identified here as NMOS goes into saturation PMOS is still in linear. Next consider this point C. In point C your, your both the devices are on and what is the output? Your output is equal to your input. So VDD minus, uh, sorry, VDD by 2 will be your input and your output likewise also will be VDD by 2. So the currents which are flowing here are saturated current. Both the devices are on and therefore they are saturated connect, current. Similarly, when you come to region D, both the devices are on, one is in saturation and the other one is in linear. Next, please understand in region E, here Vn is greater than Vtn, therefore NMOS is on and it is in linear. And your Vtp is greater than Vdd minus Vtp, which is not a desired condition for the PMOS to be in on state. Therefore, PMOS is in off state. So, these are the conditions. Now, when you check here, when Vn is equal to 0, Sorry, when V in is less than VTP, your complete output is your NMOS device is off and only one device is conducting that is your PMOS device. And at the same time, when you notice from this region to region, what is your output? Your complete output is VDD. So in the, this condition, when V in is less than VTN, your output is VDD. Next, in this condition, it is not exactly VDD by 2, it is slightly greater than VDD by 2. Here it is equal to VDD by 2, here it is less than VDD by 2. Here your output is 0, it is coinciding with the x-axis 0. Therefore, we understand the devices NMOS and PMOS in different contexts with respect to A, B, C, D, E. And likewise the explanation is given here. Therefore, we have a summary of this to be understood or blindly if you want to rem remember, you write A, B, C, D and these regions you have to understand the graph and write and you write this linear cutoff, linear saturation, saturated, saturated and the reverse status, line, saturated, linear, cutoff and linear and this is the summary of the entire DC characteristics. Next is beta. So we have beta which is normally used for all the transistors and beta p is equal to beta n means the inverter threshold voltage is exactly equal to VDD by 2. So if your inverter voltage is half of this then beta n is equal to beta p. There are different ratios. for beta n and beta p and they are called as skewed inverters. So if beta p and beta n ratio changes, the switching threshold also moves. You can notice here in the first graph beta p by beta n is equal to 10. As you move towards left, your beta p by beta n becomes 0.1. So as higher value will be the outermost curve, as you reduce the ratio, you move tend to move towards inside. Okay. 
So beta is given by W by L. Gates are usually skewed by adjusting the width of the transistor while maintaining minimum length for speed. Next we have fast transistors. So already we know now NMOS passes, NMOS passes logic 0. Very good. But logic 1 is deteriorated. NMOS is a good uh, transistor for passing logic 0. PMOS is very good for passing logic 1. This is because of the threshold voltage drop. So when you see you have a characteristics or oh sorry you have a device which is NMOS where the gate is connected to VDD and the source is also connected to VDD. Or in other words, this is at logic 1. So what would be your output? Your output would not be completely VDD. Your output would not be completely VDD. It would be VDD minus VTN. Because it is at logic 1. Next, your, therefore, what can I say here? Your logic 1 is not completely logic 1. It is deteriorated. Whereas when you see PMOS transistor passes logic 1. It is at low potential. And the gate is also at low potential. So 0 and 0. What would be your output? Your output should be 0. But not so. The output would consider the threshold voltage VTN. Sorry VTP. This voltage would be stored in the capacitor. Therefore, VTP, even though the input is 0, gate is 0, it is not 0. Therefore, 0 logic is not properly transmitted. It is a deteriorated 0. It is not completely 0. It is still giving you some voltage and that some voltage is called as VTP. Same way, we need to understand the context here. Now you have your cascaded NMOS structure. Here also you have cascaded NMOS structure. But what is the difference you notice here? You have your source, you have your drain. Drain in turn is connected to the source of the next stage. Drain in turn is connected to the source of the next stage like this. But in this case, graph in this diagram D, your gate is connected to the drain of the previous stage. Your gate of the next stage is connected to the drain of the previous stage. So in that case, what would be the change in voltages? So here VDD and VDD both are NMOS. NMOS passes logic 0. But both of them are at high. Therefore, your high logic doesn't work out well in NMOS. It is deteriorated. Therefore, your output is VDD minus VTN. Next again you have logic high and this is VDD minus VTN and what is it you are passing here? It is not completely logic high, not completely VDD. It is lesser than VDD. So same output you will get here. Similarly same output you will get here because it is not completely VDD. If it was VDD it would have been deteriorated because it is less than 1 volts. Therefore your it is not completely logic 1. Logic 1 is deteriorated. Therefore, it comparatively, it is not logic 1. At the same time, I can't completely say it is logic 0. But it is not logic 1. Therefore, the same voltage gets transmitted in this cascaded structure. Next diagram, if you notice, the gate of the previous next stage is connected to the drain. Now you see here, both are NMOS devices. In NMOS, there is a deterioration when you have logic 1. So, source is connected to high, gate is also connected to high. What do you expect the drain? Would you get VDD? No, because logic, logic 1 is de degraded and therefore your output is VDD minus VTN. Agreed. Okay. Next, again here you have logic 1. So, logic 1 cannot come as it is. It is deteriorated because it is NMOS. Therefore, how much would be the deterioration? VDD there is a drop already because of this device and the gate is also giving another threshold. Together they add up and they turn out to be minus VTN. 
So the output here is VDD minus VTN. So in the class we will be solving this with different voltage levels with numerical and that will help you to understand. So please concentrate in the class as well. So this is how the graph is given the understanding and these are the questions with respective to the module 1 uh, chosen from the previous question paper where the syllabus was slightly different. So state and explain Moore's law which is asked for 4 marks. So what does Moore's law state every 18 months there is a change in the number of components fabricated on an IC and it is double the previous size. List the expressions for IDS of an ideal MOS transistor for different regions of operation. So you have IDS is equal to 0 and IDS is equal to the linear expression, linear current expression and IDS is equal to the saturated region expression. With the help of a neat diagram, explain the cut of linear and saturation region channel formation in NMOS with different values. Yes, this you can write. So briefly explain sub-threshold condition and geometry dependence with respect to non-ideal IVFX in MOS transistor with relevant ex expressions. So what exactly happens in sub-threshold condition where it is still less than VTN, how the device behaves. So you can talk about leakage current, you can talk about hot electron effects, you can talk about punch through, so many effects are there and that is because of the current flowing in the substrate. Derive the CMOS DC transfer characteristics okay, and show all the operating regions 8 marks. This is not there. Of course, right now you can't say it as enhancement mode. We understand that enhancement mode working in a different topic called as long channel effects. So that is what you need to understand here. Derive expression for drain current in linear and saturation region for NMOS. Okay, we can understand, we can go along with that. Similarly, same diagram, working of enhancement. So you have to talk about the different gate voltage conditions you are giving. Long channel effects. VGS is less than 0. VGS is greater than threshold voltage. With, uh, sorry, VGS is negative. VGS is less than VT, VT, then VGS is greater than VT. So three conditions you have to explain where you get the different modes called as the accumulation mode, the depletion mode and the inversion mode. Transfer characteristics and notice channel length modulation and noise margin for 3.5 marks. So marks distribution, I hope you must be getting an idea. Uh, yeah, mathematical equations explain velocity saturation and mobility degradation effects. So this also you should practice mathematical equations. Transferred characteristics of a skewed inverter with beta ratio effects. And there is a problem. So consider an NMOS transistor with nominal voltage that body is tight. How much does the threshold voltage change? Okay, you have to find out the change in temperature voltage. So all the question papers, the previous year's question papers with respect to the topics are given here and the marks distribution also. Please make a note about all this and prepare as accordingly with this and the relevant contents which has been given to you and please also refer the prescribed textbook.